recording in progress. Now, let's say if I want to integrate, and I got the integrate integration of x squared dx. The integration, this is the operator, we already agreed. When we do that one, that's how we do it. We just actually increase the power by one in differentiation and multiply. Here, we're going to divide. But the C appears. So x cubed over 3 plus a C. So this is how we do integration. If the integration is like that, for example, I got y equal uh, anything, let's say it's x cubed plus a 2x plus a 5. And the question is integrate, integrate. And when I do integrate, I need to do this. I need to end, uh, add the integration operator here and here and here. So I need to integrate these ones. You can do individually. I'm just going to do it like a proper way. So I'm going to integrate the x cubed dx plus the integrate 2 outside x dx plus a 5 outside. And here there is a nothing dx. Yeah. When there's nothing, there's a 1 there. <coughs> so this thing will become x4 four over 4. You know where the 4 comes? 3 plus 1. That's 4. So x4 four over 4 plus 2, then x squared over 2. x squared because the power is 1. So 1 plus 1 <coughs> over 2. Excuse me. Okay. And remember, integration of 1 is just an x. The reason it's an x is because there is, in reality, it's not a 1. It is x to the power 0 x to the power zero is actually one. Anything to the power zero is one, except zero to the power zero. Okay, so what happened is you do like this, plus one over one, which will just becomes an x. So that, when that thing is, uh, you integrating the one, it's an x. But do not forget this bit, the last bit is super important, plus a c, where c is the constant of the integration. Okay. So this is, I uh, just integrated that into this. So that's that simple, done and dusted. Let's say I want to integrate. So first there are a few formulas we need to know. When I do the integration of the cos x, it is actually a sine x plus a C, so C is always, always, always there. Integration of a sine X is a minus cos X plus a C. Integration of a second square X is actually a tan X plus a C. So these are things we need to actually know. Okay, now how it works. Now let's say, let's say I got y equal, y equal um, cos 5x and I want to integrate. So I want to integrate. If I'm trying to integrate this one, forward. If I want to integrate this one, what I will do is, uh, let's integrate that side. So I'm going to do integrate cos 5x dx. Now, when integrating, this will be like that. I know the integration of cos is sine. So that will become a sine 5x. Okay, that's fine. When we do differentiate, we actually differentiate this way, and we get the answer and we multiply it here. But this time, I'm also going to differentiate this one. Differentiate that, that bit. What's the answer? 5x. Differential of 5x is just a 5. So I'm going to divide this thing by a 5 as well, 1 over 5. So this is how we actually integrate 
that bit. Now, same thing we can do with a sign. If I got, let's say, uh, another question, let's say I go y equal, y equal, let's say, sine of 10 x squared plus 8x, let's say, just for the sake of saying. Um, I miss one thing. They should be a plus c. Okay. Now, let's say I want to integrate this bit. How I'm going to do that, that bit, integration of this bit. Let's say I want to integrate it. So if I do integration of sine 10x squared plus 8x d of x. Now, integration of sine is a minus cos. So that will be minus, minus cos and whatever is there, 10x squared plus 8x as it is. Now, then I need to do is I need to actually find the derivative of 10x squared plus 8x. So if I do that one on the separate, d over dx of 10x squared plus 8x. That will give me uh, 20x plus uh, 8. That 20x plus 8, I need to divide this thing by 20x over 20x plus 8. So either I can just put like here, 20x plus 8. And best thing to do that one is put in a bracket, plus a c. That c is a constant of integration. Okay, if I want to find the area of the section bounded by the curve, how we do that one? Now, let's see if I got the equation of the curve, y equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then there are other lines, and I need to find the area. Okay, now to do that one, this is what y equals to 0. This line, this line is y equals to 0. So the y equal to zero, I'm just going to put the line a little bit up so you can see that one. This line is y equal to zero. No, it's y equal to zero. Y is zero, y is one, y is two, y is three, y is four. The x equal to zero is this one. See here, what's the value of y? Yeah, yeah, it's other way around. Yeah, okay, now x equals one. So this is, this is zero. This is going to be x equals one, yeah? So we can find out the x equal one. I just plot the graph. Uh, let me just turn this one. Okay. X equals one will start from here somewhere. So let me see blue. No, let me use red again. Okay, so x equal one. This is the line that is x equal one. This is the line x equal one. And the other one is x equal to three. So x equal to three is going to be somewhere here. Let me just extend this curve, obviously sketch, it's not a real graph. And this line is x equals three. So we need to find the area. Which area we are looking to find? We are looking to find this area. Um, let me share the area. That shaded area is the area we need to find. This is the, and how do you find the area? We will use a concept of the limits. So before we do that, we got this bit, this equation. Now let's have a look at this equation and let's integrate the equation. So I have the equation y equals this. Okay, this is the equation. I need to integrate it. So to integrate that one, I need to put the integration on both sides. I need to put the integration on both sides. But one other thing that will happen because I'm integrating with respect to x. The other thing is the value of the x. I will apply the limits because I don't want the whole area. I want when x starts from one. So I can say the x starting from one, that's the lower limit. And x end at three, that's the top limit one and three i just need that one now when you have the limits there is no constant the constant of integration doesn't appear because we need a definite value so how we do that one 
just the normal differentiation you do find exactly as it is. So now if I differentiate the three X here, differentiation of three X three is here, that becomes the X cube over three plus four is here, that becomes the X squared over two minus five is there and the X cube. Plus C. Oh, plus C. Uh, rather having plus C, we put two lines. We put two lines and we just put that thing here. Start from one and then three. We put the limits. These two lines are known as the modulus. Yeah, modulus line or mod line or whatever we call it. We put that one. Now I can simplify this thing. Let me simplify that one. So that becomes a X cube plus a two X square minus five X. And these lines are still there, one and three. And I tell you what to do uh, now. Now we apply the limits. How do we apply the limits? I'm just going to do the limits on this side. Now the limits mean it starts from one and end at three. First, we use a top limit. This is known as the top limit. This is called the lower limit, upper limit, lower limit. So this one is the upper limit. And this one is known as lower limit. The idea is upper limit, it goes like this, upper limit minus the lower limit. That's how it works. Now, let me just apply the limit and let me show you how it works. So wherever there is X, put the value three. So I'm using upper limit now. So that becomes a three cube minus two times three squared minus five times three. That is my upper limit done. Minus the lower limit. Minus the lower limit. What's the lower limit? Is one. So one cube plus two times one squared minus five times one. So lower limit. Now find the value of this one. So 27 minus 918. What is that minus? Which minus, sorry? Minus two. Is Come on, it's a plus. It's not a minus. Pay attention. Okay. So you got 27 plus 18. And that one, minus 15. Thank you, Muhammad. Okay. So I got that bit. Minus. That's one. Plus a two. Minus five. Okay. What's the answer? Anyone got an answer? 32. Minus, what's the answer here? Oh, no, sorry. That's yeah, the answer. It's starting. 30. Minus, minus two. Oh, okay. 30 minus minus two. Okay, so that's 30 minus minus two. So 32. The area under the curve is a 32. That's the area, all this area. Now, we don't know it's a kilometer square. It's a meter square. It's a millimeter square. It depends on the unit. So 32 units square. This is how we find the area under the curve. If we got, uh, let's say we got a formula where we are given the area. Maybe we need to find the area of the section when two equations are given. The first one is y equals to 3x plus 1. This is a blue, blue line equation. Uh, the, the, la, uh, equation the line of this equation is this one. And the other one is the black one, which is the red curve. It's a quadratic one. It's going to look like that. So this is just a sketch. But what we need to do is we need to find the point of intersection. We need to find this point and we need to find this point where these both intersect. Now, where these both intersect, if you have a look, the X of the red line is the same as the X of the blue line. And even here, the X of the blue line is same as the X of the Y line. Oh, sorry, of the red line. Now, and the y of for this equation is same as y for this equation, so which means they are equal. This point belongs to both. This point lies on the red line and the blue line. This point lies on this line and this line. So what we can do is first we need to find the point of intersection. So first step is find point of intersection. Uh, 
Now, point of intersection of these thing, two things. Let me just uh, move the camera a little bit up. Now, how do you find the point of intersection? To find the point of intersection, make these two equations equal to each other because at these points, the y's are equal anyway. So you can say x squared plus a 5x minus 3 should be equal to a 2x plus 1. Now, what you can do is move everything on one side. So x squared plus a 5x. Move this 2x on this side. When it comes, because a positive on this side becomes a negative 2x. Minus 3. This is plus 1. Move on this side. Minus 1 equals 0. So you will have x squared plus a 3x minus a 4 equals 0. Now, you can do that one. You can solve. This is a quadratic equation now. You can solve this quadratic equation either by factorization or by using the quadratic formula, whichever way you want to do. Uh, I can do with the factorization. The way factorization work is, this is minus four, and there is an invisible one. Multiply minus four and mi one. The answer is minus four x squared. Yeah, multiply these two together. This term and that term. The answer is minus four x squared. Now think of two numbers. When you multiply, the answer is my, uh, answer is minus four but when you add them or subtract them the answer is three so it goes like this one x squared plus four x minus one x minus four so instead of three x i write out four x minus one see if i multiply them i got the minus four x squared. but if i add them this is the answer again this is how we factorize now from these two, what is common? Just these two, the first two things, what's common? X is common. So I got X plus a four. What's common here? Nothing, but minus one is common. So X plus a four is left. So when I factorize, it becomes a X minus one and X plus four equals zero. When you got that bit, you need to split that into two parts. You need to write it like this x minus 1 equals 0, which means x is 1. And you got x plus 4 equals 0, which means x equals minus 4. I got the two values of the x's, but I don't have the values for the y. Now, this value of the x, I can put in any equation. Now, the top equation is easier and simple. So I need to put this value of the x here. So y equals 2 times 1 plus 1. So then y is going to be 3. So the point of intersection is x is 1, y is 3. So this is, this point, we got that point. This point is 1, 3. This point of intersection is 1, 3. Now I need x minus 4. I need to put it back into this equation. I can put in any equation. Give me the same. But top one is easier to do. So I can do y equals to 2 times minus 4 plus 1. So that will give me y equals minus 8 plus 1, y equals minus 7. So the point of intersection is minus 7 minus 4, minus 4 minus 7. So this is minus 4 minus 7. So this is a point of intersection. Now I got point of intersection, minus 4 minus 7. And one three. Now what what we do next is um, I'm just going to clear the screen. Now we got this point now minus four minus seven and one three. The area we are looking for is bounded by these curve. So it's the that the area we're looking for. This is the area we are looking for. Okay. Now, there are two different ways of finding this area. I can find, I can find the area under this curve, and then I can find the area on the top of this curve, the red one, and then I can just find that one and do that one. But when I do that one, I can apply the limit from minus four, the x is minus four, and the x goes all the way up to one, so minus four to one. Now, the formula for this one is, what, which is a top line, the top line is the blue. So when I'm doing that one, I need to integrate this one. 
The limit goes from minus four to one. The minus four from here and the one from here. And then, okay, yeah. Okay, then, then after that one, what I need to do is I need to actually put this thing here, the top line, which is two X plus one. So I need to put two X plus one minus that one, which is going to be X squared plus a five X minus three D of X. So this is the one I'm going to find. So the top curve minus the bottom curve. And then I just integrate as normal. But before I integrate, I just need, it's better to do one step before. So let's say it's one and minus four. Okay, so that becomes a two X plus one. This minus will change all the sign inside. Minus X squared minus five X plus three. I can do one more step before I do that one. This is two X, this is five X. The best thing to write that one is write in proper order. So minus X squared, I can write first. Minus five X and two X is minus three X. One and three is a four. Okay, I haven't started integrating yet. Now I'm going to integrate and I will apply the limit. There will not be any C. Okay, now if I integrate this bit minus x squared, my, that becomes a minus x cubed over three. That becomes minus three x squared over two. That becomes a four x. And obviously I need to have the limit, the top, the bottom. Now I need to apply the limits. I got this thing. Now I need to apply the limits. The limits are the top limit minus the bottom limit. So let's apply the limit now. Okay, let's apply the limit. So when I start applying the limit, that will be um, wherever there is X, I'm gonna put one. So minus one cube over three, minus three, one here over two plus four times one minus and the lower limit uh, minus four so minus minus four cube over three minus three four square over two actually minus four plus four minus four so if you put that one, you will get a final answer. Put that one as in one go, and you will get an answer. Okay. When you put that one, you will get this answer, 20.833. Now these, this is the area under the curve. You can leave it like that. You can put that this thing um, in uh, either the um, fraction, which is going to be 120 something, 125 over six or you can leave it like that. It's, it's your choice. Okay, let's have a look at this question. We have to find the area of a section bounded by these lines. So I draw on the picture. Now, Y equals to zero. Yeah, Y equals to zero, that's the first line. Okay, well, we don't care about that one. Y equals to eight X, which is that line. Y equals to eight X is this line. From O to all the way to A, that's the first line. And the other is y equals to nine minus x squared. Nine minus x squared is this curve. So we want to find that one. First, we need to find out the limits. Before we can do the limits, we can actually split that into two sections. So the first one will look like a rectangle, a triangle. Now I can find the area of this one. Let's call this section as section one. I can find the area. Then I can find the area of this section. Let's call this one as section two. And then I can add that one. But first, I need to find out what's the length, what's the width, what's the length, what's the height. I need to find out what is the point, coordinates of the point A. Now, point A lies on 9 minus x squared and also lies on 8x. So what I need to do is we need to find out the point coordinate of the point A. To do that one,
first we need to find out the point coordinates of point A. Now on point A, the both lines are intersecting, so their y's are equal, which means I can do 8x equals 9 minus x squared. I can move everything on this side, so that becomes a 8x minus, no, plus x squared minus 9 equals 0. If I write a quadratic form, it will become an x squared plus a 8x minus 9 equals 0. Now I got that bit. Now this is a quadratic formula. I can straight away factorize. So 9 and x, I multiply that one. This is minus 9x squared. I need to think of two numbers. So x squared is already here. Minus 9 is already here. I need to think of two numbers when I multiply, the answer is minus nine, but when I add, it should be eight X. So it's going to be plus nine X minus one X. So instead of eight X, I wrote this thing. Now I'm just going to see what is common here. The X is common here. I'm left with X plus a nine. And the other one minus one is common. And I'm left with, x plus a 9 equals 0. So you see x plus 9, x plus 9 is same, which means we are doing it right. So I can write x plus 9 in one go, and the other I can write x minus 1. This is x is minus 1. This is how we factorize. Now I can do x plus 9 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. You have to put this one equals 0, and this one equals 0. Which will give you x equal minus 9, which will give you x equals a 1. Now, if I have a look at, if I have a look at this bit, now the a is in the positive, so which means it's not minus 9, it is a positive 1, so I'm going to take that one. Yeah, I will take that one, because according to the figure, it's on the positive side. I got the x, I need to find the y. So the top one is a uh, uh, right, right, uh, nice equation, Easy equation, so I put y equals to 8x, I put the value. So y equals to 8 times 1 is 8. So the coordinate of the a, point a, is 1, comma, 8. So I find the coordinate of this one, which is 1, comma, 8. So I got the coordinates. Okay, now we got the coordinates of the point, this point. So this is a triangle. I can find this triangle looks something like this. Uh, so from this is zero, this was one, and from here to here is eight. So it's a triangle. Uh, this is eight, and this is one. So find the area. If I find the area of the triangle, it's half times the base times the height. Half is a half, base is one, height is eight. So area of the triangle one or area one is just a four. So I got the area one. Now I need to find out the area for the two. So let's write this one down. Area, this is A1, call it A1. And I say that's four. Now I need to find the area for the other bit. Now the other bit, the limits start from here and it's end here. I do not have the coordinates of the point P. So we need to find out the coordinates of the point B. So how do you find the coordinates of the point B? Point B, is where this equation, the y of this equation is zero. So to find that one, you're going to put nine minus x squared equals zero, which means nine equals x squared. If I square root that both sides, x is going to be a plus minus three. So x is either a positive three or x is either the negative three. Now, according to this equation, you can see x is a positive 3. It's on this side. It's not on this side. So it's a positive 3. So straight away, you can actually cross that one, and you can select that one, which means the coordinate of the point B is 3, 0. So I have the coordinates of the point B at 3, 0. 
once you got the coordinates of the point B, you can actually find the area of this curve. Let me find this one. I'm going to redraw this one. Here you go. So just that I need to find the area, this area. Remember, this starts of one, this end at three, and the equation of the curve is uh, nine minus x squared. So the limit of the x is x starts from one and x end at three. So I need to I need to integrate the curve nine minus x squared. And the limits are the bottom limit one, the top limit three. Integrate nine minus x squared. Nine is now converting to nine x, and that becomes a x cubed over three. There is no constant of integration because that's how it works. Because we have to call the limits. Now I need to put that one in. Put the top limit nine times three minus three q over three minus nine times one minus one q over three. Now you need to put this in the formula uh, in the calculator and get an answer. So here I got the answer 9.33. Okay. Now the first area was four. That area here is area two is 9.33. So if I want to find the total area, if I want to find the total area, which is going to be A1, plus the A2. A1, A was a four plus 9.33. So this is the total area, 13.33.